awesome chat is brought to you by sidekick media services we are your sidekick in business for social media video production and more find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com and listeners like you support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast Hey guys, it's the awesome chat. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter here in the Mayhem Studio in Pittsburgh, PA. And this is the podcast where we talk with awesome people doing awesome things in and around and outside of uh, Pittsburgh, talking about technology, social media, gaming, other podcasters, and just people doing cool, awesome stuff uh, in this new world, new technology world these days. Uh, you can check out everything. Please, I, uh, please. Subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, as well as video versions on the AwesomeCast YouTube and Stitcher page. Also, drop us a line, AwesomeCast on the Twitter, as well as our AwesomeCast uh, Facebook group, where you can have a conversation with us about the tech stories and anything else you think is awesome throughout the week. And, of course, keep an eye on the AwesomeCast uh, Facebook page. You never know we're going to drop up or hop up with their, uh, get on there with uh, these uh, uh, chats or, or, of course, every Tuesday night doing our main show at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, with me uh, this week is somebody that I've uh, I've had the fortune, of course, I've mentioned a lot of things that I've encountered in, in, in traveling and technology and, and video uh, production with uh, Baja SAE over the last, uh, well, two seasons now, and now this year with Formula SAE. And one thing I'm very fortunate about is I found I found my geek people uh, at, at these events, I, I've realized. And uh, and on and our guest uh, today is one of them. He is the uh, chief scorekeeper, uh, technology guy with Baja SAE and, of course, Digital Engineering Solutions. This is a company down in Huntsville, Alabama. Mike Zeman is joining me on the podcast today. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. I've been trying to track you down for a while because I love the conversations. <laughs> We've done a couple of videos for SAE, of course, about the technology you guys are using and um, and, 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 and and things around that. And we've had some other conversations about some tech you've been using um, outside of that that you know maybe we don't want to show off in the videos or anything like that. But 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 uh, it, it it was cool to find like you know kind of that tech center around everything happening because I don't have much in common with the car people, engineers out there. <laughs> so it's been nice to, to chat with you uh, along the way. Uh, just for those, uh, uh, the uninitiated, can you, can you kind of give them a, a brief um, um, idea of what Baja SAE, Formula SAE is that we've been doing? Yeah. So Baja SAE is one of the collegiate design series that the Society of Automotive Engineers hosts. And the whole point of these is to educate young men and women who are in some sort of technical curriculum about how to solve real life problems. Uh, this ranges from anything from design to actually going and building and fabricating something and then using that in a real world application. In our particular case, it's a competition and the competition in Baja involves bringing this vehicle that you have built to a race and competing in a number of different types of events. So the, the, one of the cool things about Baja, and, and I'll talk more about formula in a little bit, is there's, there's a large hidden curriculum. Uh, in order to succeed at your main objectives here, going building a car, showing up to race on time, having all the right stuff so that you can compete in a fun and exciting event, forces you to figure out all sorts of other stuff. Uh, the, the entire series is full of what I like to call uh, almost accidental project management uh, experience. So you get a group of interested people together and you, you're going to start a team and you're going to build this car. And at the beginning, you have almost a year to do it. And you've got a giant rule book that you've got to figure out. And you've got all these things, uh, all these challenges along the way. So the, this, the teams really grow a lot in, A, their understanding of, the techniques involved, what, what I actually have to do to design and build something like a small race car. Um, and B, what, what do I have to do uh, along the way to make sure that I get to my destination, that we actually end up with something that is, is going to be able to compete and, and even see how do I manage all the other things like the, the team aspect, the schedule, 
uh, the interpersonal relationships. Like we've got a guy that's a fantastic welder, but he, he pisses everybody off. How do, how do we make that work? Right. Um, there's all sorts of challenges and, and these challenges are, are real. Like this is, this is the stuff that people deal with in their regular jobs day in and day out. And what, what a lot of the kids don't even realize until later is that having to face these in an exciting, fun, challenging event in college, uh, forces you to get a head start on that. Uh, one of the great things that SAE is really proud of is that these these programs, these competitions produce some of the best people in their industries and sectors because they've had to go through these, these real-life experiences and figure all this stuff out in kind of a, uh, you know, a, a giant mess of a situation. But, but we laugh now because, you know, you, that that happens a lot. That's that's real life, and so it's a fantastic crash course on getting ready for real life. And that's one of the things that I that I really like about it. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, and, and, and it's been pretty cool because even some of the videos I've been working on this week uh, around Formula and everything, like there's there's people from General Motors, there's people from a lot of these companies. Player is talking about like, hey guys, we were exactly where you are, uh, so it is this like feeding ground. I, I think the the one quote I've always been told. Uh, when we were preparing for me coming out for formula was about Elon, uh, Elon Musk saying like if you're interested in, in working for SpaceX win formula SAE's competition right you know <laughs> stuff like that like that's a pretty high standard <laughs> so right right no pressure huh? no 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 pressure at all and and you know and, and the fact that in some of the work we do like you know we're talking with rocket literal rocket scientists from SpaceX that are a part of these competitions um, on the judging side as well. So they're there. And, 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 and uh, the interesting thing is these companies are all there basically recruiting. Like, and, and it's interesting to see um, that interaction happening as well. Um, I, I want to get, so, so, so what, what do you do? Like what, what's your background, uh, your, your company when you're not working with SAE? Well, I spend a lot of time supporting SAE in their events and, and it's been great to, to be, a, a technology partner for SAE in a sense in that we were able to come in and, and we understood enough about the competitions from my experience and some of the guys on my group um, past experience with the competitions to know, okay, we see your pain points. Mm-hmm. We've been through them. We know exactly what they are. Um, we are a bunch of technical guys. We've got guys that are electrical. We've got guys that are software. We've got guys that have mechanical experiences. We have... Um, you know, all this fantastic group of guys, we've got a giant tool set and toolbox. Let's use some of these things to build stuff to make the competitions better for you, better for the teams, and better for all the volunteers that are that are spending time there making it happen. So that's really really what my what my mission is, at least in the in the scope of, of SAE competitions. So the what do, what do we do when we're not supporting SAE? Well, we we do similar things for for other commercial customers. Um, I'm not sure whether let's see, I'm not sure how many of them I can mention. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Whatever you're comfortable with. <laughs> um, you know, we, we've one of the, one of the really cool things is just like being on the team, we've had to evolve. We've had to develop technology. We've had to face all these challenges such as project management and, uh, and how, to, how to create something new that helps the competition be better. And at least in, the, in Baja especially and, and in Formula in other ways, the competitions are, are not an easy environment for things that are technical. Like the, the, the joke when I was on the team was, well, we'll get a new laptop and it'll last one race, <laughs> you know, because that's, that's what it's Baja destroys everything. It just seems to happen. It, it takes cars and, you know, that's just, that's how it goes. Um, so we say, okay, how do we work with that? Either, either we're going to get technology that is robust enough to deal with this environment, or we're going to get technology that we can turn over so quickly that it doesn't matter if it gets screwed up. Either way, that's an optimization, right? For, for that particular setting. So when you, when you think about doing technical stuff in a setting such as a, a competition environment, in, uh, in Baja, it might be out in the middle of the desert where you have no infrastructure and uh, it may be, in a lot of cases, no power. Um, in Formula, it might be at a, at a, a top-of-the-notch racetrack 
where you're competing with all sorts of other technology that's already there. So it's, you know, one of the things that, that we've had to do is take a look at the whole situation and go, okay, what are we going to do with this? How, how we, we've got these ideas. We want to make things better. We want to do that using technology. We've got a lot of work to do <laughs> because these environments are harsh. These, uh, these competitions are really complicated and require uh, infrastructure and things that we don't have. At least when I started, we didn't have them. So, my uh, my challenge was how how do we build stuff like that? the The cool thing is once we've built it and once we've we've developed a lot of the stuff, we turn around and we say, okay, well, we is this useful to anybody else? And uh, it turns out that there are there are some some really cool commercial applications as well. Uh, some of the wireless technology that we've put together, we have we have worked with customers at you know. Um, in some of the larger professional racing organizations to say, hey, look, we've, we've done this. We've basically proved that it works. Um, is this something that would help you? And they're like, well, yeah. You know? uh, I mean, it's not like we're inventing anything you know, crazy and new, but the, the stuff that's molded exactly to the situation that they're dealing with, that, that we've come up with for things like Formula and Baja, turns out it fits and it works for a lot of other people as well. And they're like, wow, we've never had something packaged quite that way that does exactly what we need. So we've actually supported a, a number of race teams and, and uh, other sanctioning bodies by adding technology to their races as well. Um, so could be anything from stuff like IndyCar, Indy Lights, to uh, King of the Hammers out in, um, out in the middle of the desert in California. Uh, we've, we've looked at their situation and said, how, how can we help here? Because they have all the exact same problems we do in Baja, just, you know, what, probably 20 times the size, you know, Mm -hmm. distances between sites are much larger. Uh, there's, there's 40,000 people instead of 4,000, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's, uh, it's the next rung up for us is how, how do we use some of these technology, uh, components that we've developed to, to make their stuff awesome as well. And so that's, that's a lot of what we do outside of, outside of SAE. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the technology itself. Um, so, so one of the big things is, you know, a lot of the, the, the as you said, you're, you're the chief scoring guy for, for Baja, uh, and, and, and you're involved with helping out with the formula as well and implementing some of that and helping out there. Um, I know there's things like photo gates, but there, there, there's this, there's, there's a whole kind of infrastructure, like you said, um, that's really impressive about that scoring system to to, to kind of digitize it. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what, what what kind of technologies are you implementing? What kind of challenges did you guys overcome with that? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, that's one of the things that I'm really proud of is is how we have modernized all of the scoring and timing infrastructure at a lot of these events. Um, when I when I started that in a, in Baja, we were using hand timers, so stopwatches, for a lot of things. Um, and in, um, uh, in formula, we had some, some pretty good timing systems, but they weren't really integrated with anything. So it was more like silos of, of systems, they, all these little islands of, uh, of technology. And this thing does it this way. And this thing talks this way. And this thing uses this time and this, you know, all of that. So, so there was a unique challenge here, at, at least in Baja, I got to say, um, okay, uh, I, I kind of got asked, hey, do you want to take over national scoring? And I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> that, sounds like, that sounds like a lot. Um, and I said, yeah, I thought about it. And I said, I will be glad to do this. But if I do, I'm going to do it this way. Here's, here's what I have as a vision for where I want this to go. And, and, it, and it might be something great or, it, or maybe you don't agree with it. If you don't agree with it, I'm not the guy to do it because if, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it this way. And right. this is the direction I'm going to take it. And, uh, and they said, no, that sounds great. So I was, I was happy to have that support and to be able to say, okay, if I had to make this work better, how, what would I do? We've, you know, at that point in time, we were collecting about 3,000 pieces of information every competition. And almost all of that was on paper. So the nightmare that I had to deal with was all the paper comes back at the end of the day. Hopefully all of it does. You've got handwriting issues. You've got smudges. You've got 
uh, oh, this one is missing sheet six. Where did that go? I don't know. We never saw it again. You know, like all those kind of problems. So as the, as the chief scorekeeper, the integrity of the data is really my responsibility. And I said, okay, we've got to overhaul this. Uh, how do we do that? Uh, well, first of all, we need to get we need to improve the accuracy. We need to get rid of things like stopwatches because when the whole time for an event like uh, like our acceleration event, um, when when the entire run for a good car is four seconds, and you think the human error associated with clicking a button is maybe a half a second to a three quarters of a second, that's a terrible chunk of that run. <laughs> that you know, it's like. Uh, we got our run was three seconds plus or minus one second, you know, and uh, and you go back and look and, and some of those, you know, in, in some of the earlier days, like maybe 10 years ago or so, um, we were deciding the winners by margins that were uh, less than the error band. So we're like, we, you know, I was like, I don't have great confidence in this. Like, you know, our, our customers as, as the guys putting on and organizing these events are these young engineers and they have very high standards. I mean, you, you know, when there's no decimal places, they are upset. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and that, that makes sense here. So we said, okay, we, we want to, we want to go digital timing on all the events. So, uh, we were able with some sponsorship help to get there and to, to buy photogate timers that are accurate down to a thousandth of a second. So we said, okay, that sounds good enough for us. That should work. Um, the, the timers started out as a console and you had to look at them and then a guy had to write down the time. So we said, okay, here's another source of error. How do we get rid of that? We don't want the, we don't want the guy writing down the time. Um, a lot of this stems from uh, when I used to have to verify those paper score sheets we would we would see all these problems and we'd look at all the all the pieces of it from all the different angles and we go oh they they thought the car number was 11 but it was really 77 because they couldn't see the tops of the sevens you know <laughs> or things like that or um, little little uh, little you know problems all the problems you run into with uh, with handwritten stuff and I said, we got to get rid of the handwriting. We got to get rid of the transcribing because, you know, I'm the funny thing is I'm actually I, I think I have acute dyslexia. So I, I tend to switch things around, especially numbers. Um, I'm really bad at checking numbers, which is comical that I then became responsible for all of these numbers. <laughs> and I said, well, the best thing to do is get it right out of my hands and into a database or something where I can actually trust it. So. We started, once we got all the times, we said, okay, we, we want to integrate all this stuff. What do, what do we do? Well, we need to pull it in and, you know, we were, sometimes we were putting it in on paper. Sometimes we were putting it in into Excel or something like that. We decided, look, we just want, we want to do end-to-end -end digital somehow. So we're going to put it into a database and we're going to send it back to the main point uh, where, I'm, where I'm working. So that way I can actually take a look at everything as it's happening and spot problems earlier than having to do it, you know, a few days later when we're looking at everything. So put together some, some software that would take in that information, um, a little down, a little further down the line, we integrated it with the, with the photogate timer. So now the time comes right across. Nobody has to actually key it in. Amazing how much little things like that help. And, um, and then we said, okay, well, this would be really cool if we, if we could get all the data back to one point uh, at the same time. Like uh, rather than running around at the end of the day with, you know, flash drives, you know, jump off the ATV and plug it in and say, okay, we run back to the main thing. We said, all right, can we do better than this? Uh, we said, well, in order to do better than this, we're going to need to be able to communicate wirelessly anywhere on the site. How do we do that? <laughs> uh, so got into some Wi-Fi stuff, said, what do we need to do to solve this problem? Uh, I've, I have, uh, you know, the, the Wi-Fi in my den goes about, you know, 100 feet. Uh, what, what do I need to do to, to bring that to, you know, go through the woods with non-clear line of sight at, you know, 2,400 feet? Like, how do you, how do, you do that? Um, so looked into that and developed some stuff and we said, okay, there's the great stuff. Now we got to make it work outside because it doesn't, you know, it's not designed for outside. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't run off solar power or anything like that. We said, but it could. Um, <laughs> so 
that's the kind of stuff that we do. It's, I mean, we're really not doing anything magical, uh, but it's really taking uh, technology and applying it to our situation and, you know, buffing out the, the smears and rounding off the, red ed- the, the rough edges so that we can use it in our environment and it works really well. Awesome. So we, yeah, we, we ended up um, getting some really good, you know, outdoor Wi-Fi stuff that we can communicate over, you know, a large site. And a- after we got that in place, we, sa- we said, okay, how do we continue to, to bring down the, uh, really, a lot of the focus was bringing down the error rate. Um, not, not only from a, you know, like a networking sense, and, but more from, uh, from the team's perspective. When, when I, when, when I was a team member, one of the things that we hated the most is we did, we felt like we did all this work all year long to come to the competition. And then it all, it, it was a great experience, but the outcome of that were all these numbers, all of these scores and results that we got. Uh, we worked all year to do the maneuverability course. It ended up in a 74.5 second run. Okay, so that, that's kind of the outcome for us. So when those numbers are wrong or when they're missing or when they're, something happened and they got screwed up, that results in a bad experience for us. Like we had that happen plenty of times. Um, so I said, how do we root all that out? How do we, how do we make this, this whole situation better by having fewer problems? So, so all of this stuff was was toward that goal. All of it was how do we how do we make it such that the there are the experience is as good as it can be. And we said, all right, we want to give the data back to the students. We're collecting the data right away. Uh, we're finally at the point now where we somebody completes a run and within about four or five seconds it's in the database and it's there for anybody to see. But the teams couldn't see it yet. So we said, let's open it up. Let's put this on some sort of a website or. A, or at that point, we didn't have apps, but uh, how, do, how do we get it back into the hands of the people that it really matters to? And then all, that allows us to do two things. One, it's really exciting to see your results right away, because in my day, you had to wait about two days before you learned what you got. <laughs> so we said, you know, um, how, do we, how, do we, how do we get that back? So we made a mobile website, and we put it, uh, made it available on that Wi-Fi, and we said, here you go. You can see what we see. You know, we're not trying to hide anything here. In fact, we're trying to get as much back into your hands as possible. And that allowed us to, A, elevate the competition experience a little bit because you could see your results right away. It's kind of it was revolutionary to begin with. And B, you can look at it. And if there's something wrong, you can let us know. And that's, uh, that's, that's also been really key. Uh, not only have we been dropping all of the error rates by, you know, eliminating all these points of failure and all these problematic situations, but we've also given the teams a feedback loop where they can say, there's something wrong here. I'm missing something here. This thing is broken. And then we can go look into it right away, like maybe five or 10 minutes after it happened instead of two days later when nobody remembers. So, um, so we've we've developed all sorts of stuff. We we've, we've hit, you know, roadblocks along the way, of course, growing pains and all that, but we've we've always sort of backed up and said, what can we do to 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 take this to the next level? And uh, now we we have a, you know, cases of traveling infrastructure. We set up a huge wireless network in half a day that supports thousands of people over the the next week and um, and provides our information, like all, all of our information to flow across that network and pieces of a piece of information that begin at something like a piece of embedded hardware or a circuit board or something that, uh, that we've put together, some of them that we've integrated with, comes up, goes over that network, goes to where it needs to, other people access that data, it all happens like like that. And uh, and it's really cool. It's neat to, to step back and to see that uh, we've kind of built this big invisible um you know, thing that, that allows us to get all this technology work done. And so that's, that's been a large part of it. And that's, uh, that's one of the places where we spend a lot of time, but we think it's worth it. You know, it's having the ability for all these neat little tech gadgets to talk to one another and then the teams to be able to use it. And now we're even using it for other stuff. We've actually got a lot of spare bandwidth on that network. And one of the things we're seeing more and more interest in is live broadcast. And so I'm looking back at this and going, wow, you know, two years ago, I was trying to figure out how to get, you know, 
300k from one place on the site to another and now we're talking about three concurrent hd video streams across this thing and so it's uh it's got its own challenges but we're uh we're having really good success with that and i'm really excited to see where that grows to see you know what 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 we can do next to continue to progress the series and elevate the competition experience for the teams uh using our investment in the technology and the stuff that we've put together that we found works really well that's awesome. Hey, that was a, a, a cool to see a formula you guys doing that stream, and of course you're broadcasting, broadcasting it internally across the uh, uh, Michigan Speedway up there. Uh, and it, it was it was cool to see your setup and see that you're using XSplit of all things. Uh, so, <laughs> I That's know, right. I know a lot of friends in gaming that work that use that, and uh, it was cool to see that on, on that level. Myself being a Wirecast, Blackmagic, uh, you know, open source broadcaster, whatever the case may be, depending on the project myself. So. Uh, but uh, yeah, cool, cool to see that, that going and, and seeing like what kind of IP cameras work because I, I I'm afraid of wireless and video personally. <laughs> like I I stay away from it. <laughs> I stay away from it, like the plague, you know, because we used to like strings uh, to 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 you know points in, in sporting events ourselves and and uh, you know have people tangled up in cords and everything. And I'm just like I'm never going wireless because I don't trust it. And right. uh, and and it was cool to see that you guys implementing that and seeing that it's at that point where you could do something with it. Right. Uh, it didn't happen overnight. No, no, certainly <laughs> not. Um, it's both a technology and a, and a tinkering and tuning thing. Mm -hmm. But um, we, uh, the XSplit is kind of a funny topic because it's almost a microcosm of a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like uh, one of my friends introduced me to XSplit and they said, hey, I've got this great, I, w I was looking at Wirecast at the time mm -hmm. and, and they said, I got this great open source thing and I said, really <laughs> we're gonna do a broadcast <laughs> using free stuff uh well you know me and in, in, in my business background I, I certainly have nothing against open source and i've used a lot of open source stuff but i've run into a lot of problems where if you need business grade reliability uh you often have to spend something you might not have to you know break your wallet or anything but you you uh it's difficult to get the the time effectiveness and and the reliability that you're often looking for in a business setting. So I said, I don't think it's going to work, man. <laughs> let's not let let's just look at buying a thousand dollar license or something, you know, and then we don't have to worry about it. And uh, and and they said, Nah, it's pretty compelling, you know. You should, you should look at this. So I played with it a little bit, and and um, you know, it's it's crashed once or twice, but nothing like what I expected. And after I guess we're here going on three years now of playing around with X Split, and uh, and I really like it. Like I, I'm, I've in, in a sense in that little area I've been converted. You know, I, I can say, well, not everything follows this pattern, but at least in this case, this thing has been really solid and has delivered for me uh, a, a great value compared to some of the other stuff. I actually. I looked at some of the Wirecast features and I said, you know, I can't do the preview grid the way that I want to do it, and XSplit lets me do that. And um, and there, it, it had its own growing pains, right? You know, I I have capped out a really nice box trying to use some stuff in XSplit, but I've also, <laughs> you know, beat them up about it and said, when are we going to start doing global sources? And you know, last year we get global sources, and I'm like, finally, <laughs> you know. So it's a uh, it's a cool thing. Same thing with the wireless. You know, I, I would have never thought uh, three or four years ago that we would be sending multiple HD streams over wireless. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's never going to work. <laughs> you know, I want a cable. I want reliability. I want glass. I want something. And, uh, you know, we ran it at, at Michigan and we've run it at other other series stuff um, over the wireless. And it's been great. It's, it's I mean, I'm, it's not... I wouldn't say that it's five nines of reliability like, you know, the broadcast industry really wants. But I also think people's tolerance for um, some of that has is, is changed a little. I, mean, I used to do a lot of video stuff way back in the day and uh, YouTube ruined me <laughs> <laughs> because every single video on YouTube, the audio levels are crazy off. The You know, the frame is all bad and moving around. And I just wanted to like stab myself when I watched YouTube. So, because I, I came from the, you know, the TV and the and production and everything was great. And you did, if it, if it wasn't like that, you didn't put it on the internet. You didn't publish it until it was, uh, eyes were dotted, T's were crossed and all that. Um, and, uh, and, and YouTube just kind of blew that out of the water. 
and sometimes I still hate it. But <laughs> what it's also taught me is that you you need to target what your audience wants, not what you want. Um, you've got to find the right mix of is it is it high dollar or broadcast ready, or is it hey I did this in three minutes and it worked. You know, um, there's a sweet spot in there somewhere, and that sweet spot moves around depending on the expectation. Mm-hmm. So. So that's what I think we're doing. Uh, I, I'm happy to use some of this technology to to find the sweet spot and hopefully next for a broadcast video at some of these events. That'd be really cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, definitely. I, good, reactions, good reactions, of course, from uh, what we're seeing. I, I know Tennessee last year and Pitt State that we were just at in Kansas. Uh, we're, we're streaming, it looks like, to some pretty good uh, results there. Of course, they have the internal you know, uh, uh, students doing it, so they have everything on hand right there on campus. But uh, but really cool to see that kind of moving forward. Um, I want to talk about it. So you're down in Huntsville. You mentioned, you mentioned before we uh, went, went on recording here that Huntsville is kind of a tech center of, of the southeast over there. That's true. Uh, it's really a cool city. Um when, when I'm out, you know, we travel a lot for these events and when we're talking to other people and they say, hey, where, where are you guys based out of? And I say, oh, we're out of Alabama. And <laughs> sometimes they kind of laugh because they're like, you guys have power now, huh? <laughs> you know, but, um, but yeah, it's actually uh, a recent statistic was there, there are more guys with PhDs, kind of people with PhDs in Madison County where I, where I live here in Huntsville than in any other county in the U.S. And, uh, that right there says, okay, well, Huntsville is a special place uh, given the Southeast and given Alabama in general. And I love Alabama. I think it's a beautiful state. I, I like all of the stuff we have here, and I like being in a tech center in that. Um, I go out to lunch in Huntsville, and you hear anything from uh, people discussing lasers to other people talking about um you know, all sorts of junk. Like you, 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 you just have to, uh, we, I've made the, the joke that if you bugged every table in Huntsville, you would hear everything you wanted to hear, you know, about anything technical. And, uh, and it's funny because it, the con- you know, overhearing stuff like that is absolutely the norm here. And, uh, and it's not in a lot of places. It might be in Silicon Valley or in, in other tech centers, but, uh, but I think we definitely have a lot of that here. And it's really cool to have, uh, fantastic outdoors life, hiking, fishing, riding dirt bikes like I'm into, and have people that are just some of the smartest people you've run into um, and, uh, and and to work in that environment. It's really pretty cool. Uh, we've got a lot of neat stuff happening in Huntsville, with, uh, like, like in a lot of cities, with um, microbreweries. Uh, they've just sort of exploded over the last... Uh, couple of years and so that's kind of a neat scene too and a, and a neat way to get out from behind the screens every once in a while and just kind of relax and chill and talk to people in a in a relaxed setting and in a fun place so I, I really think um Huntsville has a little bit of everything you know I mean so I I really enjoy here being here I think it's a it's a great place to, ha- to have a small business and to have a tech business um and I think we're going to see more and more of that we've seen nothing but growth up here uh over the last five or ten years so Really cool stuff. It's cool to hear about other tech centers like that. That's one of the re- reasons we started this show was I felt like we were a, a um, kind of Pittsburgh was kind of a, a forgotten flyover state when when all the tech was uh, supposedly happening in New York and San Francisco. Uh, so it's always great to hear somebody else, you know, another another, you know, tech center like that, uh, that that that's getting some attention too. so awesome. Absolutely. So, um, so with that, hey, you know, you got some cool stuff coming up here. Um, of course, we have those two more events in the season: one for Baja, one for Formula. That I'll see out here and uh, uh, here through June. Um, but uh, you know, kind of what is you know, we've talked about this a little bit on the videos, of course. But um, you know, what's kind of the future for the tech that you're you're looking to do? I know we we've had discussions about kind of now you've got you've captured all this information, you've put it out in front of people. Um, I know you, we had a discussion about uh, kind of a big da- data look at, at the scoring technology as well. I think there, there is a lot of that. Um, what, what we can do now that we have a lot of this information is we can look at stuff. And it might be from, say, our internal, our internal processes. Uh, we look and see how long it takes people to get through tech and how do we make that better um, We've got data to support those decisions now. We look at things like uh, what is the you know 
how how quickly do people arrive or leave from events uh, in, in in the individual scores of the events? When do they come in, and and how long did that take? And what did the histogram look like, and all that? And um, I think it's fantastic that we have that kind of stuff, and I think that we're going to see more and more use of that. The other thing that I think is really cool is um, the teams are starting to get more into that. Uh, we've seen at least two or three teams that uh, that didn't used to use any type of technology, start adopting technology in the last year or two. Um, one of the teams has actually built uh, an entire data acquisition platform uh, on top of things like Arduino and open source and you know all these, all these sensors that uh, are pretty inexpensive and figured out a way to get it wirelessly back to their car and to watch it while the car is going around the track and go, oh, we're, we're going to need to change this you know, or, or something like that. And uh, it may be something as simple as monitoring the fuel remaining, or it may be something as complex and, you know, in, especially in the formula series as monitoring 52 different engine parameters as you're, as you're going through endurance and saying, ah, oh, look at this, you know. Um, I think that we're, we're going to see more of that. I think it's awesome that, uh, that, that people are going in that direction, that teams are seeing the value in not only just building stuff, but in building, um, tools to capture information to make decisions, to drive those decisions that they're making. I think that that is a very relevant skill in today's uh, technical world. And, and to be able to say, no, we, we chose this because this is what the data tells us instead of we chose this because it was on sale or we chose this because it fit the car nicely or something. To be able to say, this is uh, we, we made a decision based on measurements that we made. That's, that's a really good engineering way of approaching the problem. And uh, the nice thing too is the teams are usually because they're they're college teams. They usually have to say, "Well, we love this, but we can't afford it." So there's there's also the cost that you know aspect of it, and those two tend to balance each other out. And and that's just a really good skill to come up with to to learn and to say, "How do we make a good decision based on all of this information? Uh, not just is it awesome." Or does it look cool? Or does it do what we need to do? Or does the data support the decision? Uh, but can we afford it? And does it add business value? And, you know, that's that's really what it comes down to: is how do you, how do you juggle all those things? And the best engineers, the best technical guys, are the ones that can see all of those factors and take all that into consideration and say, "Here's our choice, and here's why." Absolutely, so, hey, it's, it's, that's exciting to see where that's going and seeing that develop, even over the two years i've been going to uh, competitions here and uh seeing what comes up next year as well so um if people want to check out more information um of course uh you can you can go there's a podcast uh mike's been on on that as well uh for both formula and baja I, you know, full disclosure i actually uh, assist with those uh for sae uh, you can go to fsaeonline.com as well as baja sae.net uh, or just look up Baja SAE, Formula SAE. You'll find all that kind of stuff. It's up on iTunes and everything like that. Um, and, and, and it's mostly for the competitors. But if you have an interest in the technology, in in the, the, the engineering of the cars and the things that the students are going through, some really good recap stuff in there as well, as well as some of the video stuff over on the uh, Facebook and YouTube uh, pages for that kind of stuff. And, and, and Mike, where can people find uh, more information about what you're working on? Uh, my company is Digital Engineering Solutions, and you can visit our website at digitalengineeringsolutions.com, and it's got a, just a few little bits of information about the types of things that we do. So the other thing I would encourage is, uh, guys, if, if you're interested in this kind of technology, I mean, I, I love the, the world that we're in because I get to deal with, on a, a almost a daily basis, the intersection of racing, which is exciting to me, and engineering and technology and business. So there, there's a nice big cocktail of things going on there. And I, I'm happy to, to play in that all the time. What I would recommend for any of you guys that are enthusiasts, um, that, are, that are kind of piqued your interest by some of the stuff we're doing is, um, one, if, if you're in college, consider starting a team. Uh, there's this small window of time when you can actually be on a team, and that's while you're at college. If your college doesn't have one, start one. It's not that hard to get started. Uh, go there. Be a part of this. Uh, it's a fantastic experience. It's a lot of fun, and you'll learn a lot of stuff, too, I'm sure. If, uh, if you're out of college, um, consider coming to volunteer. 
uh, we have these events all over the U.S., and they happen three or four or five times a year, and we always are looking for technical-minded people that can come help out. Uh, it's really great to see all, all these people come together and support a really fun, really cool educational event that has a, a nice competition flavor to it. Um, and let's see, I guess that's about it. Come, come help <laughs> us out. Come, come be involved somehow, either volunteer, start a team or, uh, or, or come join me. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. And of course, if you guys want to continue the conversation, please check out everything at awesomecast.com. This and a bunch of other shows that we do around technology, around awesome things, around around some fun stuff and a few tips as well. Uh, and um, please check us out on the social media support us on patreon.com slash awesomecast. Thank you so much to our awesome guest, Mike Zeman, joining us. I'll see you guys. I'll see you next week in Peoria. Take care. And uh, you have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.